The current military escalation undermines hopes of peace in the country. International reports say child labor in Yemen has reached alarming levels. The giants and government forces penetrate further in Ma'rib, Ahmed Houthi militia collapse. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. This is the English News of me, Shaz Abdel Bey. The Council of the League of Arab States called on all countries to label the Houthi group as terrorist organization. During an extraordinary session held on Sunday, the Council strongly condemned the brutal terrorist attack by the Houthi militia on Abu Dhabi International Airport in the United Arab Emirates. The Council stressed the need for the international community to stand united in the face of this terrorist act that threatens regional and international peace and stability. It also called to take immediate measures to deter the Houthi militia. Yemen's conflict shows no signs of ending soon and the future of an entire nation is at risk of being destroyed. Despite the United Nations' efforts to bring peace in the country, Houthi militia's escalation and obstinance seem to stop all those efforts. This report has more details. The United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres condemned recent military escalation in Yemen and called for an immediate halt to the escalation. In a press briefing on the United Nations' work priority, he stressed on breaking the cycle of violence and called for a ceasefire. What we need is to stop this vicious circle in which things get escalating one after the other. What we need uh, is to have, as we have been proposing uh, from long ago, a ceasefire together with the opening of harbor and uh, uh, airports and uh, then uh, the beginning of a serious dialogue among the parties. This escalation needs to stop. The question now lies, why the peace process in Yemen is hampered? The country needs a peace agreement that relies on a number of factors. The first of which is a comprehensive ceasefire throughout Yemen. All parties should be cooperating with the United Nations efforts to facilitate the delivery of full stuffs to all Yemeni people, especially children and women whose number is more than 16 million, in order to avoid a humanitarian catastrophe whose first chapters began a long time ago, resuming negotiations to reach consensus on the formation of a transitional government that includes all components is also a priority. The affairs of the country were run within an agreed upon roadmap that includes a referendum on a new constitution and a move towards its comprehensive legislative and presidential elections. After the Biden administration removed the name of the Houthis from the list of groups sponsoring terrorism, in 2021, the group expanded their military operations, opened new fronts, and increased their armament with support from Iran. United Nations Special Envoy to Yemen, Hans Grandberg, reiterated that the escalation in recent weeks is among the worst in Yemen in years. He said this escalation undermined the chances of reaching a sustainable political settlement to end the conflict in Yemen. With this unprecedented escalation and the blockage of all prospects for political penetration in the near term, the human tragedy is culminating. The Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs recently informed the Security Council that there are 16 million people in Yemen in dire need for aid. This aid totals about $4 billion. Millions in Yemen are suffering out of poverty, hunger and severe restrictions of movement. Diplomatic advisor of the United Arab Emirates, Anwar Gargash, affirmed his country will not hesitate to defend its authority and national security. This came during his meeting with U.S. Special Envoy to Yemen, Tim Linderking, who convoyed the U.S. unity with the UAE in the face of the Houthi terrorist attack. He added that the U.N. Security Council agreed on the condemnation of terrorist attacks carried out by the Houthi militia against civilian facilities in Abu Dhabi, which represents a serious international position towards the aggressive behavior of the militias, repeating the danger they pose on regional security and international maritime navigation. 
The coalition said it started preparing for a military operation to deal with the sources of the Houthi threat in Al Jauf, north of Yemen. It noted that these sources witnessed launch of drones. On the other hand, giant brigades and government forces seized control of new areas in Ma'rib as they are making important victories in these fronts. This report has more details. The commander of the 55th Infantry Brigade in the Yemeni government forces said the scales on the ground have changed in favor of the government forces and tribesmen south of Ma'rib Governorate after the progress made by the giant brigades in Bayhan district. The commander pointed out that the Iranian-backed militia are living the worst days on Juba and Harib fronts, adding that the southern fronts have become the incinerator for Houthi criminal gang. Military sources said the Houthi militia had suffered heavy losses in lives and equipment on the fronts south of Marib. Certain that dozens of their militants were killed or injured by the fire of the government forces, the bubble resistance, and the coalition aircrafts. In this context, the forces of giant brigades advanced towards the road linking the governorates of Ma'rib and al Baida after they were able to clear the mountains overlooking Harib in Ma'rib and those overlooking the road between Ma'rib and Shabwa. With this progress, the giant brigades secured the vital road between Ma'rib and Baida after a fighting that lasted hours. The fighting ended with the expulsion of the Houthi militia from all sides from which they were attacking the road and shelling the villages of Hain in Shabwa Governorate. Shabwa, Marib and al Baida are considered the key of victory to the Yemeni forces of legitimacy over the Houthi rebels who took the capital Sarab back in 2014. The three neighboring governorates are a key for in advance for the government forces backed by the giant brigades and popular resistance. Three children were injured in a mine explosion left by Houthis in Hudayda, west of Yemen. Local sources reported that the children were herding sheep in Hais when a mine exploded and left them in a serious condition. Children in Yemen are subjected to the worst forms of child labor, including human trafficking and using them in armed conflict, especially in areas under the control of the Houthi militia. This report has more details. This child has a normal place in school, but the harsh conditions of life forced him to work at an early age to secure the necessary sustenance for him and his family members. The street is their only shelter. A large number of them work in cleaning cars parked in streets. The rag they hold in their hands is what they earn their livelihood from. The vision is clear in front of the driver who rewards them with money, but the uncertainty of life accompanies them as long as they are mortgaged labor on the streets. On the other hand, young girls cannot find work and they earn their living from beggary, and some women are waiting for the hands of benefactors. The phenomenon of child labor and beggary is increasing as a result of the humanitarian and economic conditions that are increasing day after day in the capital Sana'a and the rest of the governorates. Reports issued by the United Nations indicate that more than 80% of Yemenis live below the poverty line, and 5 million Yemenis suffer from malnutrition. Families have been forced to make their children victims of labor at an early age to help secure the necessary sustenance, even if this will make them belong to the 2 million and a half students who have been deprived of education. On the other hand, the shocking figure issued by UNICEF indicated that in Yemen, a child dies every 10 minutes from preventable causes, including malnutrition and diseases that can be prevented with vaccines. But these children are destined to struggle for survival, as long as politicians have turned the country into a chaotic state and in the absence of the sense of responsibility towards the children of today and the pillar of the future. Too many children are impacted in a war that is not of their making. It is extremely important for those who are fighting to stop the violence and reach a political solution. This is the only way to spare children's lives and future and prevent more misery and grief for families caught up in this conflict. U.S. 5th Fleet banned a stateless fishing vessel in the Gulf of Oman on January 18. It added that the ship had been caught before smuggling illegal weapons off the coast of Somalia last year. U.S. forces discovered 40 tons of fertilizer that is also known to be used as an explosive activist. The U.S. Navy transferred the vessel, cargo and five Yemeni crew members to Yemen Coast Guard officials. 
Yemeni academic sources revealed a Houthi organization spying on university students and recruiting them. The sources said the organization is very active in private universities, especially those seized by Houthi leaders. The sources stated that the Houthi organization was involved in recruiting students and mobilizing them for sectarian activities, revealing that a branch of a private university in Sana'a had recruited more than 100 students this year and was behind the kidnapping of more than 200 others. In Taiz, the General Authority for Antiquities and Museums organized a workshop to introduce antiquities and heritage in this area. The workshop is based on the importance of the cultural heritage of Taiz, where monuments and historical buildings have been destroyed and looted. Taiz is the throbbing heart of Yemen in culture and history. It has rich monuments, many of them have not been discovered yet in 180 sites. This underground heritage should be protected. Coming next. Housing Watch continues to hijack telecommunications in Yemen as part of their agenda to control the masses. Welcome back. Yemen suffers internet outage nationwide since last Friday. Houthi militia is accused of using their revenue from banks, telecom firms and Hodeida seaport to finance their military activities. This has made it a target for airstrikes. This report has more details. Internet services were interrupted in Yemen early Friday after coalition airstrikes targeted a communication site in Hodeida used by Houthi rebels for military operations. Plunging the war torn nation offline, Netblock said that disruption began around 1 a.m. local time and affected Tel Yemen, a monopoly run by Houthi rebels that controls internet access in the country. Sources said that airstrikes destroyed the electric facility of the communication building. The internet lasted for two more hours as the service was fully dependent on backup batteries. Sources added that the internet service was down when the backup batteries ran out. Engineering teams are walking underway to reach the internet service as rubble delays the operations which would last for one week according to the same sources. Coalition acknowledged carrying out accurate airstrikes to destroy the capabilities of the militia around Hodeida's port, calling Hodeida a hub for piracy and Iranian arms smuggling to back the Houthis. Communications building and the Yemen International Internet Gateway in Hodeida was subjected to airstrikes after the militia militarized civilian buildings and facilities in Hodeida and the areas under its control and made them vulnerable to bombing and targeting. San Diego-based Center for Applied Internet Data Analysis and San Francisco-based internet firm Cloudfair also noted a nationwide outage affecting Yemen beginning around the same time. Internet in most areas of Yemen has been fully cut off, while some government control areas are connected to internet through the state-owned Adanet. Adanet prices high rocketed, reaching a record of $2,000 for a single SIM card, according to locals. Observers believe that Houthi militia has resorted to blackout method again by cutting off terrestrial internet services in the various governates of the republic. Local sources in state-owned Adanet revealed that an offer made to the Houthi-owned internet service provider to reconnect through its servers, but no response has been made yet. The Falcon Cable has another landing in Yemen's far eastern port of Ghaiba, but the majority of Yemen's population lives in its west along the Red Sea. A cut to the Falcon Cable in 2020 caused by a ship's anchor also caused the widespread internet outages in Yemen.
sources revealed that Meadow Fields exports more than 15,000 barrels of crude oil daily. According to the sources, the value of revenues from the oil exported from Meadow amounts to more than $2 million a month. They indicated that the oil extracted from Meadow oil fields is transported via transport trucks to an Nishima oil port south of Shabwa. After healthy control of the pipeline extended from Meadow to Hudaydah in west of the country. The Riyadh lost some of its recent gains in transactions in Aden and the rest of the neighboring governates. The selling price of the dollar recorded 1,125 compared to 1,105 on Saturday evening. This comes at a time when banking and remittance were affected as a result of the interruption of internet services. Rise in food prices and collapse of the Yemeni Riel, two historic lows in the past months are driving more citizens into poverty and hunger, especially in the Houthi militia controlled areas. Many families are suffering on bread and water with devastating impacts on their health. This report has more details. The high prices in Sana'a and the areas under the control of the Houthi militia make citizens unable to provide the most basic necessities of life in terms of food and shelter. Areas experiencing acute food shortages and high levels of malnutrition have been observed in the Houthi-controlled northern provinces. The economic policies of the Houthis have made the deteriorating humanitarian and economic situation worse, as they have led to a surge in food prices. Prices remain significantly above average nationwide. The lack of income earning opportunities and high food prices will likely continue to drive below average purchasing power during the production period. The surge in food prices brings renewed suffering to the Amni civilians. Since 2015, the economy has shrunk by half, and more than 80% of Yemenis now live below the poverty line. This collapse is most visible in loss of income, depreciation of the Yamni Rial, loss of government revenue, commercial import restrictions and rising commodity prices. I am speaking as a Yemeni citizen. The salary I receive in local currency in relation to the massive increase of the exchange rate is worth nothing. We live on the brink of famine and starvation. The majority of Yemenis are suffering in this chaos very few can afford life necessities with this crisis going, and the rest are living below the poverty line. More than 80% of Yemen's population face major challenges in accessing food, drinking water and healthcare services, amid the lack of human resources, equipment and supplies. Many families could not bear the consequences of the salary cuts. Households did not survive this stormy tide of need that led them to starvation and famine. Employees are left with two empty pockets in front of their families and children, unable to provide basic meals, the value of medical services or pay their rent. Yemen's skyrocketing inflation is driving families to further cut down on their meals, edging them closer to starvation and malnutrition. Yemenis are facing crisis or worse levels of severity of needs in obtaining the necessities of life, maintaining their health and well-being, and the coping strategies employed just to stay alive. The World Health Organization and King Salman Relief Center signed three agreements to support and enable the capabilities of health sector worth 15 million U.S. dollars. The first agreement will support the health sector through giving help to more than 1 million Yemenis. The second agreement includes raising the readiness of health facilities in the governates of Shabwa, Ma'rib, Abyan and Hadramaut. As for the third agreement, it will give logistical support against the coronavirus. Medical sources said Yemen governates are witnessing a widespread outbreak of viral fevers amid fears of the new variant of coronavirus, Omicron. Hospitals and healthcare centers in Taiz received dozens of patients with malaria, fever, colds, typhoid, and a number of other fevers during the past days. In Ib governate, hospitals received dozens of patients with fevers on a daily basis. Here's a reminder of the main headlines. The current military escalation undermines hopes of peace in the country. International reports say child labor in Yemen has reached alarming levels.
The giants and government forces penetrate further in Ma'rib, Ahmed Houthi militia collapse. This is the end of the news. For more, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Yemen Today English. Thank you for watching.